Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, we're gonna be going through some really cool iOS shortcuts. Now I'm running iOS 14.3, I believe beta. But in this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some of the shortcuts that I've custom built for myself. Like this one, which is one of my personal favorites. Hey Siri, arm home. That's done. I'm gonna walk you through the applications that you need. I built these specifically just to get some productivity gains, but at the same time, I love automating things because I'm lazy. And one of the things I also like is the ability to have your shortcuts on the, on the side here in the widgets as well, which I'll go through later on as well. So the first shortcut that I'm gonna go through is actually setting up a Zoom meeting. Now for this, you're gonna need an application called Opener. And Opener is essentially an application, it's about a dollar, two dollars on the App Store, that will allow you to open an application within the app itself and not send you to a Safari or Chrome browser. And sometimes you don't want that. So you're gonna need this to do some of the Zoom ones. It's not mandatory. You're gonna have to do some finger clicking otherwise, but for two or three bucks, it's not a bad app. So let's check out the first automation, which is opening your own personal Zoom meeting completely through Siri. Oh, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment if this is the kind of content you like. The other thing I should let you know is I was gonna put another shortcut in this, but I decided I'm gonna have a separate segment and that's gonna be the iOS shortcuts for parents. And me being a parent myself, I know that there's certain things that you can't always have two hands free. So there's certain things you can ask Siri to do which are super, super helpful to keep your kids entertained, but at the same time, keep your own sanity. So look out for that video coming up in the future. So let's check out the first automation. Hey Siri, start my personal meeting. And just like that, Hey Siri will open up my Zoom and that allows me to go ahead and host my own meeting. And I can start by unmuting the screen up top as well as the video as well. So without having to touch anything, I just have to say, hey Siri, and it launches my Zoom meeting. All right, let's take a look to see how that shortcut actually works. All right, so the way this works, so this is my personal um, Zoom URL, which is obviously blurred out, but you can find this out for yourself. You're gonna set up that URL. You're gonna have an automation that says, get the URLs from this specific URL. You're gonna use that opener URL to open the URL and then you're just gonna exit. I said URL so many times there. But basically what it's doing is it's getting your personal meeting. It's then saying, okay, let me extract the actual link from that and then let me open that link through this URL opener so that I can open it directly through Zoom and not some other kind of a tool. All right, so in this next one, what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna go to Siri and ask her to set up a meeting for me. Siri's gonna ask me when I want it and what the title is, and then it's gonna populate an email with the .ics file, which I can send to anybody. So let's do this. Hey Siri, set Zoom meeting. Meeting title. Finance meeting. When? Tomorrow at 9 a.m. Till when? Tomorrow at 10 a.m. And it'll go ahead and do it and boom, I can then just send it to whomever I want to and that's it. All right, so in this one, essentially what's happening is I'm gonna be using that same URL that we talked about in the previous example. It's gonna ask me the meeting title. It's gonna ask me when I want it and when I want it to end. Then it's gonna go into my calendar and it's gonna go ahead and input the meeting title when and when it ends so that I have a version of that in my calendar. And then I'm gonna take this calendar invite itself with my Zoom meeting information and then send it to the recipients that I want to with the subject in this case, I've said meeting title. So this is a great way to not only set up a meeting, but also set up a Zoom meeting so that you can actually have a video call as well. Now the next one, I don't know about you, but I typically have to re remote into a server all the time, and that's some kind of a Linux server to do some kind of work on it. Um, and in that, I always have to go up and boot up Terminix or something, uh, terminal or whatever it may be on whatever device I'm using. And I have to log in with my SSH or Mosh credentials, but I can just automate that as well. So this is what I would say. Hey Siri, connect to remote server. Okay, viewing with Termius. And that's it. So it would go ahead and open all of my files and I've just logged into my own personal PBX. Uh, and that is how I can just very easily do it. This could also be a remote digital ocean or Linode server you can easily do as well. And this one is super, super simple. You just have to go ahead into your apps and drag over Termius uh, and then connect to, in this case, I'm connecting to my Raspberry Pi PBX, though I can easily connect into some kind of a server as well. So that's how you do that one. So let's go on to the next automation. 
Now there are times that I want to connect to my own VPN and that sometimes I use NordVPN or it could be a different VPN that I use. For now, I've configured it to use Nord. So for me to use that automation, I would just say, hey Siri, connect to VPN. And so it'll automatically connect. And once it connects, it'll close down the connection. And then when I don't want to use VPN anymore, I will just say, hey Siri, turn off VPN. And so it just disconnects me and there you go, I'm off of VPN. So to add this one, it's quite simple. We're gonna go ahead and open up NordVPN. Then we're gonna go into our settings. And then you're gonna see this button here called add to Siri. You just said add to Siri and you're gonna do one for quick connect and one for disconnect. And it'll add both of those commands in there for you. So this next one I actually got the idea from some friends who were unfortunately impacted by the COVID-19 uh, job situation. So at this point, they're trying to contact recruiters um, and other folks. Um, and sometimes they just want to do it while they're on the go from their phone. And for those of you guys who use things like iOS, you know that it's sometimes difficult to just work with files. So that's kind of really what inspired this. So I can do something very simple. And in this case, I just want to use the widgets to show you that you can do that through that as well. But if I scroll over to the widgets, I do something like send resume. I'm not going to really send my resume, but what this is actually going to do is when I click it, it'll let me go ahead and just pick any random files uh, within my actual iCloud drive or my iPad or whatever I want to pick. But I can pick, you know, something like, like for example, stopwords.py. And if I wanted to pretend that was my resume, I can just say choose, put in the recruiter's email whatever it may be and just hit done and send and it'll send it off to that person it's just an easier way to do it rather than fumbling through your files attaching the file which works with some mail clients and it doesn't work with others this is just easily done um, and it's a quick and easy way to get your resume out to people that really need to see it all right so the way this one works is you're going to go ahead and import a documents widget into this now remember earlier i showed you that you can select the file if i didn't want to select the file i could easily just go into this and unclick the document picker and i can just go ahead and say send me the actual fixed path for a specific document so if you always want this to be a resume you can just leave it fixed so you don't have to worry about the clicker in which case it'll as soon as you hit play It'll just run through this automation. You put in the email and it'll just send that one document. So that's another way to do it. But basically you're gonna say, I'm gonna take whatever file that I've inherited from this. I'm gonna put in the recipient's name and I'm gonna call it my resume. You can call it whatever you want. And then once you're done, just end this. So this one's a very simple one to set up as well. Now the last one is a personal favorite of mine, but something that requires a lot more, not only automation within Siri, but also automation within Home Assistant. And that is arming and disarming my house from my iPad. Now for this one, you're also gonna need a device called an Invisalink, which basically connects into your alarm and that allows you to remotely control it without having any kind of monthly costs associated with it. I've had the Invisalink for about three or four years. I absolutely love it. And even though I do have my entire home alarm monitored, this is a second way for me to monitor it and control it. And this is the device that feeds into Home Assistant that allows me to do the automation. So, so this one I would say is more for the advanced user. So I can do something very simply like, hey Siri, arm home. That's done. All right, so in this case, what it's done, as you, as you saw from the other video on the side, is it'll go ahead and arm my house. Now, if I wanted to disarm the home, I've actually coded a little bit more logic into it where I can ask it to disarm the home, but then I ha it's gonna ask me for a code. I'm obviously not gonna say the code here, but once I put in the code, it'll go ahead and read that code and automatically disarm my home. So I'm gonna enter the wrong code and tell you what it, show you how this works. Hey Siri, disarm home. One, two, three, four. I'm on it. Wrong code. So that actually says wrong code, which is built into the error check. Now I'm going to put in the right code, but I'm obviously going to blur it out and I'm also going to beep it out so nobody hears it, obviously. But this is how it works. Hey Siri, disarm home.
Okay, alarm now disarmed. So there you go. So now it'll actually show the alarm is disarmed and it'll send me a notification to my phone as well. Very handy when I'm going to go to bed or if I'm just working on my iPad and I got to let the dog out and I forget that I've actually got the home cell armed. I can very easily do it here rather than running upstairs and doing that. So in order for you to arm the home, you just have to go and to your script that you have to turn on your actual alarm. So you have to create a script on your home assistant side. You're gonna go to the IP address where your home assistant is sitting. And in that you're gonna grab some details. It's gonna give you a token, which you're gonna have to get from the home assistant profile screen. Then you're gonna pass through application JSON and then whatever your script name as well. And then once you do that, it will go ahead and turn it on. Now you can set a turn on script, one for say for example, turn on home and then one for, for example, turn on away. So you have the ability to do that um, right down here actually. So here I'm gonna say a script dot alarm underscore stay mode. If I want this to be away, I would just change that to away mode. And that's how you execute on this one. All right, so this one is rather complicated. Um, the logic behind this that I used was was maybe overcomplicated, I'm not entirely sure. But basically I've got a home assistant instance set up and in that I have some scripts. Some of those scripts will go ahead and turn on my home alarm or turn it off. So in this case, I'm just going ahead and getting that script. I'm getting the dictionary of the content of that script. And that dictionary is gonna basically tell me whether what state it's in, whether it's on or whether it's in arm mode, whether it's in home mode. Um, and then if, it is actually disarmed and I try to disarm it again, it's gonna tell me and say, hey, listen, this is already disarmed. You don't need to worry about it. Because if you go and put in your password on a disarmed alarm panel, it'll actually put it into away mode and you do not want that. So this is just that error check to make sure that it, that doesn't happen. Uh, so that's why there's an if statement. So if it's disarmed, tell it that it's already disarmed so you don't have to worry about it going to away mode. Otherwise, ask for the code. The code then is, it's gonna go ahead and press that code into the script. Now, obviously you do not, and I repeat, do not wanna put your code into something like this. Um, you actually want your code on the server side. So my what this is doing is it'll actually go into another script that I created and it'll determine whether or not that code matches the one that's actually on the server. Um, and if it does match, then we're good. It's gonna go ahead and disarm it and it's gonna say, okay, it's disarmed. Otherwise, it's gonna determine and say it was that wrong code. So I'll leave this up here for a few seconds for you guys to take a look at. Um, I really wouldn't know how to port this over because it's such a complicated thing. Though, there's probably easier ways to do it and if you guys do find there's an easier way to do it, go ahead and put that in the description. Now, obviously here, I put my IP and here you're gonna put the IP of your home assistant instance, whether you have it on local or whether you have it somewhere remote. But that is essentially what the IP is going to state. And then when you hit forward slash API states, it'll actually tell you all of the different types of entities that fall within that API. So hopefully this made sense to you guys. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.